Roads are symbols of life's journey. They are conduits of life's activities, vitally important to helping economies grow. Crossing through tough forests and concrete mountains, connecting people and places. But roads are more than just asphalt and concrete. They provide access to employment, health and educational facilities. Roads stimulate economic activities and social development. For these reasons, road infrastructure is the most important of all public assets. Today on Sanral Road to Growth, we look at how Sanral is driving economic growth and job creation in South Africa. Building South Africa through better roads. I manage the N3 construction upgrade. Uh, there is 14 uh, projects underneath the N3 upgrade. Uh, and of course, uh, the need uh, arose uh, to upgrade the N3. Uh, several reasons, of course. Uh, one, uh, this particular project has been identified uh, as a SIP, a SIP being Strategic Infrastructure Project, which are a group of projects that are managed from the President's um, office, uh, specifically uh, to improve the economy of the country. There are several uh, strategic infrastructure projects and this is one of them. Uh, the reason why, of course, this was actually uh, identified to be such an, uh, an important project uh, is because of the economy. Uh, there is a, a lot of economic growth between KwaZulu-Natal and Kaute. As you may have realized, um, there's a lot of um, freight or increased freight um, transporting of uh, goods uh, from the harbour, KZN, KwaZulu-Natal harbour, Deben. Uh, all the way to Gauteng, which of course is the economic hub of South Africa. Uh, so one of the reasons why uh, the N3 had to be upgraded is to, of course, to accommodate that increased traffic flow uh, in order, of course, to facilitate improved movement uh, along the N3. Uh, but of course, as you know, uh, with every uh, road construction, there is, of course, improved business opportunities within that region. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, uh, that you would realize uh, that in nearby communities will drastically uh, benefit from improved uh, road access, access to their neighborhood. And of course, with that, uh, there will be business coming in. You will see malls being built. You will see industrial uh, warehouses being built and all sorts of uh, you know, uh, business opportunities uh, will just uh, mushroom because of this improved uh, road access. Our story began a long time ago. It's a story of growth, where we have seen the country change. Every day, there's something new. Something well class. And I can honestly say the future is right here in Zanzi. Sanro, Beyond Roads. Valentine and Nogwanda are contractors on the N2 and N3 project. Being awarded this contract has affected my business in a good positive way and of course in a profitable way. With the tender process, um, it was fair. I think it was fair for me and it wasn't that hard to actually um, bid for the tender. I had to fill in the tender document, of course, and bid for the tender. I think after two months, I was called actually um, for an interview. I was very shocked to be told that I was shortlisted for, for an interview. So I went, I did the interview, um, was put on a probation. I supplied diesel for like five times. After a few days, they emailed us the contract because we did supply and deliver to them. My company name is Minatlo. I deal with concrete tricks, which is the bead drains. We do a setting out, design templates according to drawings. Uh, after that, uh, we call the engineers to come and inspect for measurement and everything is, everything is accurate. And then after we finish with that, we pour concrete and then we do floating according to the standard that they require. So me, 
being on site has helped me a lot. Because now I can tell you what to do on be trained and everything. So when the weather is bad, it does affect uh, my business because now it's, um, I can't deliver uh, like on my day-to-day -day basis. So it's a loss for Ubachablele project of, it, of which is my company. So on a regular basis, we supply about um, 8,000 liters a day. So imagine having to supply 8,000 liters a day and having not to supply for two days because of the weather. So that does affect my business in a negative way. The next time you are on our roads. Ready for school? Yes. I'm proud of you. Take a moment to think of the number one. Oh, How in a country of over 54 million people, there is no one quite like you. No one does life the way you do. That's you. The number one. Now, do the one thing that will keep us all safe on our roads. No, thank you. So that you can continue the journey of your life. The journey of the number one. Sunroll has taken initiative that uh, within or whenever Sunroll executes or constructs a road, uh, there must be benefits uh, realized by the community initiated by Sunroll through a program that uh, Sunroll calls as Community Development Project. So what Sandal is doing with that community development project is the Sandal uh, literally now allocates a budget. That budget will actually be intended to be uh, used or given or allocated uh, to help the local municipality, to assist the local municipality to uh, implement uh, all other projects that uh, they actually uh, feel that the type of projects that are needed by the community, but them as a local municipality have not been able to, to implement. So from the uh, um, infrastructure plan that they have for that fi uh, financial year, what Sandra would do, uh, of course in consultation with the municipality, we would identify suitable projects, and out of uh, those identified suitable projects, uh, we would then, as Sandra, assist the municipality to implement. So now these are the type of projects, uh, some are not even road related, some may be road related. Uh, community development projects may range from building a community hall, uh, to building a park, uh, to building a clinic or building a school. So now this is uh, some of the uh, ways which the uh, nearby or local communities benefit. In terms of employment, uh, of course it is uh, within Sandal policy, uh, that the uh, small uh, to medium macro enterprises, the SMMEs as we call them, uh, are actually uh, uh, given an opportunity uh, to develop. And how do we do that? Um, as Sandal, of course, uh, our policy uh, actually dictates uh, that at least 30%, uh, that 30% is what we will call the contract participation goal, the CPG, 30% of the contract price is actually uh, allocated uh, to the type of projects or packages which the SMMEs uh, within their capacity can be able to, to execute. So within the contract price, 30% of that contract price goes towards the SMMEs, local SMMEs. Do you know who built this road? No. Mkuluwaako. <laughs> Nyembele. Yeah. Your grandfather did all this work. <laughs> he was there right at the beginning, when there was nothing for kilometers to get to Durban or Dundi. <laughs> I remember how proud I was to drive on this road. Beggar, mind you. 
The drive to improve our lives is well underway. This is how we respond to the needs of our people and influence our country's economic growth. This is the drive for a better M2 and M3 in Guazulu Natal. It can only get better, and it's all for you. <laughs> Sandro, building South Africa through better roads. The greater N2, N3 corridor upgrades are expected to take between 8 to 10 years to complete and create up to 15,000 job opportunities during the duration of the construction. Matulam Kize, a community member in the area, explains. In terms of my community, it's an integrated uh, community where you have portions of rural, portions of uh, urban. Uh, it's got mixed cultures and uh, the border or the divide between the two are the two road networks which is the M13 and the N3 and uh, commonly the two communities share um, economical engagements whereby you'd see people moving from the rural community coming across the freeway to head towards their workplaces or mainly on weekends, you'd see the urban community um, going to the rural areas for recreational or adventurous reasons. So that is the setup of the community space that I uh, work and live in. I think a good 90% of the time, communities depend on municipalities and Sandal is is not a visitor to the communities, as I said, and they segregate the, the two parts of their communal um, lives. But mainly, if they have a project which happens maybe every 50 years, I'll take it, um, it leaves a lot of impact on the community. And Sandal has mastered the cause of leaving the community developed, then just building a freeway and moving off to another corner of South Africa and building another freeway. So they've mastered the importance and the strategy to be used to ensure that there is community development that has taken place. My main excitement is a, a project coming at a time where I feel everyone has gained enough experience. Uh, in the previous years, there are a lot of goods and bads that one can share. And I would say the previous projects have been a learning curve when you talk about construction projects of any scope. But this time, Sandow has had time to analyze and try and review their approach on projects. They've come up with a 14-point plan, which we presented to them, which maximizes community participation, community development. So these projects, before being awarded, or being rolled out. There's, there's been mechanisms to address, I would say, all the common concerns, where how do you ensure opportunities are left to locals? How do you ensure that skills are left here? How do you ensure there are no delayed payments? How do you ensure that councillors, mayors, or MECs, or politicians have recognition and participation in the projects? There are business forums which had also had a loud voice in complaints. They are part and parcel of the structures. So this is a project that has come at a right time where everyone's complaints have been put onto the table and they've been attended to and they've been built into the contract scope to ensure that there's no repetition of stoppages or, or unforeseen problems on site. So the timing has been perfect and it's been a coincidence that we've seen the wrongs that have taken place in other projects and this one has no excuse because there's, there's nothing new in terms of what should be presented to the expected stakeholders.